The last one I want to talk about is, oh my God, Ozempic shrinks your heart. Okay, let's talk about this study for a minute because this one really, this is, <laughs> I haven't touched this because I've been sitting on it because to be honest with you, this nonsense that I see highly intelligent, supposedly highly intelligent people spouting all over their social media without, now some of these people aren't doctors, they're non-doctors that seem to have a passion for Ozempic and, and hating on it. And I, I don't think they know how to read studies. So I'm going to throw them a bone and just you know, point to their intentional ignorance, which I see a lot coming out of a few certain people. I don't know why. I'd really like to know what their monetary agenda is for hating on it so much. My monetary agenda is that I don't actually have one. I can't stand it when people lie and sensationalize things and spread misinformation. Like I am a champion for truth, even if I don't like the truth. So yeah, yes, I do have a course that I sell and that is so that I can educate people. So if people are interested, the opportunity is there. If there's not, there are probably 20 hours of free content. This will make 21 or more at this point of free content that they can dig into. So I'm not gatekeeping what I am allowed, whatever I'm allowed to say outside of a pay portal, I do. But anything that is going to, you know, be clinically relevant, I have to put inside the course for clinicians. And again, I'm letting the general public in because they need the information too, so that they know how to navigate. Cause most doctors don't have a clue about dealing with metabolic health. Like they just don't. So anyway, the folks that are just hell bent on hating on it, I always look next, like, what are they selling? Are they selling a nutrition program? Are they selling supplements? What are they trying to sell you to, like, they'll hate on it, but then they'll sell you something that supposedly does a natural version. It's like, that's like hating on estrogen, but trying to sell you something that stimulates your own estrogen. It's like, why don't you just give them estrogen? This doesn't make any sense to me, but that's probably because I can prescribe it and some of these people can't. That's the other thing. So all right, so cardiomyocyte, let's get the title of this one pulled up here. Um, it was a mouse study. So they looked at mice, kind of like the black black box warning on the Ozempic is in rats. So let's look at this really quick. Okay, the title of it is Semaglutide Reduces Cardiomyocyte Size and Cardiac Mass in Lean and Obese Mice. Recent research has demonstrated that semaglutide reduces cardiomyocyte size and cardiac mass in both lean and obese mice. The study was published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Recently, it came out. This was done out of the University of Alberta. Weight loss drug found to shrink heart muscle in mice and human cells. So let's talk about the mice first. When you look at mice studies, again, they didn't give us dosing. The, observe, the study observed that semaglutide-treated obese mice experienced approximately a 30% reduction in body weight and a 65% decrease in fat mass compared to untreated controls. It's worth noting they did this in a very short period of time. And when they dose mice, they dose them at like five to 10 times or more what a standard human dose is. So they dosing is a little tricky, but when I really asked chat GPT to dig in, the way that they do it is based on like surface area of the body in the mice. And they basically cranked these mice full in a very short period of time with a very high dose of semaglutide. And they lost 30% of their body weight and 65% in fat mass compared to untreated controls. So I think we could safely categorize that as really severe and fast weight loss. What do you think is going to happen to everything in the body? Everything's going to shrink, right? We shocked the system and overdosed the mice. That's my take. They shocked the system and overdosed the mice and these poor mice just dumped out and every, I'm sure they should have probably biopsied and looked at all the different cells of the body. I'm wondering what happened to all of them. Was there shrinkage, right? Was there atrophy? Because when you induce massive weight loss and you basically hit them so hard with such a high dose that you starve them out, that they go into severe malnourishment, of course, we're going to see decrease in cellular size, probably across the board. I bet their lean mass was a disaster too. So there's that. Um, despite these reductions in cardiac mass, no detrimental effects on heart function were detected during the study period. However, the long-term implications of decreased heart muscle mass remain uncertain. The researchers suggest that while semaglutide offers significant benefits in weight reduction and metabolic health, its impact on cardio cardiac muscle warrants further investigation especially for individuals without cardiovascular disease or obesity. So don't 
completely slam your patients with massive doses of GLP-1s in a very short period of time. Because what they did to these mice was brutal. <laughs> and that does not sound fun. All right. So what about humans? Um, we have so many benefits shown in really good data for how GLP-1s impact the cardiovascular system. So go look at the SELECT trial. It's really astounding. And the bottom line with that was they reevaluated the data and it was independent of weight loss. They looked at middle-aged folks who were obese, who were not type 2 diabetic, but you've heard me say before, I would argue they were on their way. You just don't rock up you just don't rock obesity and not walk into diabetes. But like they go hand in hand um, eventually. And they just hadn't been diagnosed yet, right? But they were probably pre-diabetic. We don't know. And they gave them a really decently high dose of semaglutide and they monitored them for a period of time. And they saw a 20% reduction in major cardiovascular incidents. What it does to your lipid profile is phenomenal. It increases your HDL, which is your good cholesterol. It decreases your LDL, decreases your very low density lipoproteins. It decreases your overall cholesterol. It just does so many just awesome things for the cardiovascular system in the majority of these studies. So I'm not convinced that it's cardiotoxic by any means. I think that they overdose the mice, right? So what about humans? Let's look at this real quick. Using the mice for the study, the researchers found that heart muscle also decreased in both obese and lean mice. The systemic effect observed in mice was then confirmed in cultured human heart cells. So they didn't actually look at humans using it. They cultured human heart cells and then bathed them in GLP-1s and saw a decrease. So what does that say? I'll post the study for you. You guys can look at it. Don't overdose your patients. Like, don't overdose yourself. Like, don't let your doctors crank the dose up. Put the work in. Get the strength training on board. Get your nutrition dialed in. Get your insulin-sensitive lifestyle dialed in. Get your other hormones dialed in. Utilize other peptides if necessary. I talk about all of this inside my course, inside my GLP-1 Stun Right University. And it's a treasure trove of information in there, you guys. There's almost 40 pages or, or more probably at this point of all the data that I've dug up categorized by organ system or issue. I've got the whole strength corner in there. The metabolic revamp toolkit is in there. A three-phase program on how to move your patients or yourself through the insulin-sensitive lifestyle and how to build upon it. So what's in phase one to get people started? What's in phase two? What's in phase three? We just simply, I really don't think we need to be cranking up the dose so high. That's my opinion again. 